Hi, welcome back to the Guillemot Kayaks Workshop. In a few days, I'm headed up to Maine to teach a kayaking class, and I'm going to bring up some of my boats. But as is usual with my boats, I spend all my time working on other people's boats, and my boats get neglected. So, um, a few of the things need to be done on the kayaks I'm bringing up. I've got the petrol play where I've got some wear and tear on the bottom of the boat. I've got uh, my strip built petrol where the gaskets on the hatches are a little bit worn out and I've got my stitch and glue petrol where the back band has come out of sorts. So I'm going to just try and knock off some of those projects quickly and have everything ready for the class. Um, hopefully I can get it all done. We'll see. So in my petrol play I spend a little bit too much time playing in rock gardens and I've banged up the bottom of a bit. Here I've got a big gouge that uh, I should probably deal with and on the bottom of the boat right here, you see, you know, I've, I've hit it so many times that I'm through to the wood here. It's been this way for a while, you know, so if you wonder what happens when you neglect the boat and you get the wood wet, well, not so much. It's not really a, that big a deal. You know, I don't want to leave it that way for forever, but uh, I'm just going to sand this away, put some new glass on it. Uh, same over here with this gouge, just sand into that a bit and lay a patch of glass over that area and epoxy it down and then I'll get to sanding that smooth. So I've got some 40 grit sandpaper here, put that on my small festool and grind away all the loose stuff. And then I want to feather in around it so I, if I put a patch of glass over this, I'm not um, putting glass on the varnish. I want to put glass on the existing glass and epoxy and have some room to feather in the varnish. We'll do something similar to this wound right here. Now I'll hose that area down with some denatured alcohol just to uh, clean contaminants off, help dry stuff out a little bit too. Now I'm not trying to make a perfect cosmetic repair here because I know how I treat my boats. I'm just going to beat it up again. There's no point in doing a gorgeous repair on this when it's just going to get knocked up and worn out again. So let that dry out and we'll put some gl glass on there. I'm going to use a little bit of heat to help dry this out. There shouldn't be much water in there. You know, I paddled last night, but you know, only in the water for a short period of time. Um, and then it's been on my car overnight. So. It's not like this sponges up a whole lot of water, but we don't want it wet, so I'll dry it out. Now I'm going to mask around here with some masking tape. Um, I'm going to do two layers of tape, one for the glass, the perimeter of the glass, the other for a fill coat. So I'll put the glass on, 
let it tack up a bit and then come back and put a fill coat on to try and level it out. So we'll see what we can do here. Start with water. This is a chance to use up all my scraps of... Uh, so that will be where the fill coat goes. Then on top of that, we'll put another one where the glass is going to go. And likewise around this little patch. I don't need a very big patch right there. I'll just cut something like that. That ought to do. And then here, I'll put a double layer on that. A little smaller one on top of it. So a little patch on top of that, double it up a bit. So that should do. I'll just mix up some epoxy. I'm using a fast cure epoxy here, um, which it's a little bit of a risk to use fast cure epoxy when it's this warm in the shop, but I've got such a small area to cover, I should be able to get it spread out before it seizes up. I'm just I only have a few days here to get this whole project done, and I want to get the glass wet out and fill coat sanded and then some coat of varnish on it before the end of the week so i'm gonna again heat this area just to make it good and warm so it sucks in the epoxy into the, the wounds All right, we will let that set up and it should be fine. So these large flat back deck hatches tend to be the hardest to keep dry. You see I've got some standoffs here that take the pressure from the straps and use and starts to compress the gasket, but it's such a wide flat surface it's hard to get down pressure on it. So I tend to use two gaskets on the back. Um, and so a gasket on here as well as a gasket on here. And what has happened with this gasket is it's moved a bit. Um, and so it's no longer compressing all the way around. If I line it up perfectly, sometimes it'll get compressed all the way around and I'll get a good seal. But if it's off just a little bit, um, it tends to have a problem. I'm just going to take and strip both gaskets off. Um, these are just, this is just a soft weather stripping. Um, and I'll put on new weather stripping and try and make it so it ends up with a better tight seal. So it's, this stuff doesn't always want to come off. As it peels up, sometimes it leaves some of the adhesive behind. If I can, so you get that back to join the part that's peeling up. I might keep that under control. You notice when I made this hatch, I put an extra fill coat around the edge here to make a smooth surface just so the gasket has something easier to bond to than the fabric texture. This also makes it uh, easier to peel up the adhesive where it's stuck to the smooth surface. I can scrape it off more easily. And we'll 
see how it comes off the, the boat. Of left on there. I think probably the easiest way to get rid of that will be using some acetone. So a little lacquer thinner first. See what that does. Don't like using. I want to go with the weakest solvent I can because just the, the acetone's pretty nasty stuff. Alright, that's pretty clean. Now I'll put a new gasket on. So this is a uh, weather stripping. It's a uh, half inch wide, 3 16 thick. Um, and it's got a soft cushion. It's sort of closed cell foam. So water doesn't get through it. And it's easily compressible. So it doesn't take a lot of down pressure to get it to compress. So I'm just going to measure out enough to get about all the way around here. Now this is a brand new razor blade. This foam is not hard, but um, since it's so soft, it, uh, it's a little tricky to cut. I want to make a nice smooth ramp up here so essentially I'm going to make a scarf in this so I want to take and cut this in a smooth diagonal so that's fairly smooth right there and see tapers away so I have the uh, peel away on the longer side. And now I will take, start to stick this down. I'm going to go fairly close to the edge here. Stick it down. And as I'm going with sticking it down here, I don't want to stretch it. Because if I stretch it, it's going to want to move later on. I'm keeping it about an eighth inch back from the edge. I'm pulling on it. I'm it long enough. We'll see. So it's not quite long enough. So it'll just make another scarf at the other end here. So when I go to cut this, st stick it at a diagonal, and then I want to be able to sort of do it all in one stroke. So I want to give me myself enough blade here. So I'm starting forward and I'm going to pull it back. So I'm starting all the way at the back edge. I'm trying to cut it, and actually I should have cut it the other direction. So, start it again. Pull it this way. So I'm starting with the blade at the back edge, and I'm cutting towards the uh, peel stick so it doesn't peel that away. So that's not a great slope there, but should do. Alright, 
right, so now I have that gap there. I'll just take another piece. Yeah. And I'm going to cut this off flush. All right, so the gasket stays fairly uniform thickness there and it overlaps so it won't leak. With the blade sticky, it tends to grab at the foam and since it's a soft foam, every time it grabs it distorts the foam a little bit and makes it so it doesn't want to do a nice smooth cut. So we will start with a new blade. And get a nice smooth cut. All right, an eighth inch back. No, actually, I want an eighth inch on this side. That's long enough, just barely. hatch is going to be a little bit proud now and it's going to be a little bit harder to get closed because that brand new gasket there is stiff but uh, the gasket should be soft enough that it'll start to compress pretty quickly see how that goes get the tie back on All right, and the front gasket looks pretty good. It took me to do that gasket. This epoxy, the fast cure epoxy, is tacked up sufficiently. It you know, feels dry to the touch, a little bit sticky, um, that I should be able to peel this off. So I have a piece of tape here, and this is one of those um, razor blades I was just using. I think it's, yeah, it seems like it's sharp enough. No, I'm gonna get a razor blade. So brand new blade in the utility knife. And let's just start to score that. Using a very light touch here. I don't want to cut into the existing glass. Occasional fiber that doesn't get cut, just come back and cut it again. So I've got two layers of glass there, and now I can put a fill coat on around there and get that taken care of. So I'm drill around here. All right, I mixed up another batch of uh, fast epoxy. I put a little cabosil in it, um, colloidal silica, just to thicken it up a little bit. This is, gonna, this is a high wear area, so I don't mind getting a little bit of build up down there. Um, make it stay where I put it a little bit more. Um, it won't be quite as clear as it could be, but in a thin layer like that, it's not going to be a big deal. Let's take and paint this right on there. Get a good fill coat. And it's a little cloudy because of the cabosil. That's all right. All right, so I'll let that cure up and uh, peel off the tape a little bit later. And tomorrow I should be able to sand that smooth or smooth enough um, and be good to go.
Okay, so it's the next day and this is all hard. There's some rough spots at the edges of the glass, but uh, you know, this is a boat that really gets beat up, so I don't need to make this beautiful. Um, so I'm just gonna knock those hard edges off with one of these Japanese style float rasps. Just knock the high spots off. So now I'll sand it down a little bit. Um, I'll start with the 40 grit that's on there. quickly attack this little spot here. Then I'll start working with a little bit of 80 grit. Then I'll have a go at it with a little bit of 120 followed by some 220 um, just to smooth it out and get it ready for a little bit of varnish. So I sand a little bit bigger area than I had sanded with the previous grit just to get rid of the scratches and uh, make sure it's smooth. I'm going to give it a wipe down with a uh, grease and wax remover just to make sure it's good and clean before I put on uh, some varnish. The finish on this boat um, where I haven't stripped it off is one of the two parts. Um, I refinished this about a year ago, maybe two years ago. Um, and I used one of the two parts. Um, from the micro bootlegger sport build I have quite a bit of this Bristol finish left over but the hardener here as you see um, it's hardened um, so this is no longer usable so I don't know if I can get more of the hardener and just finish up the cord and you know it's about half a can in here um, so I don't know if that's reclaimable. What I ended up using on this boat is this uh, Total Boat product, um, the Envy, and this is also a two-part two part system. Um, it seems like there's a little liquid in here. It's not completely liquid, but then there's some liquid in here. And this is a two-to-one mix, um, so I think I'll just mix up some of this and brush this on that area, try and get a couple coats on before it uh, flashes off and uh, see how it goes. So they recommend wiping it down with the uh, brushing reducer before applying so I'll, I'll do a quick wipe down with that. I'm 
my feeling with solvents um, to do the cleanup is try and finish with the solvent, solvent that's closest to the product you are applying. So, you know, this stuff is going to be completely compatible with the finish I'm applying. So any residue left over from this isn't going to cause a problem. Um, and it should pick up, you know, the, the material that could cause it a problem. You know, so I started out with that uh, more aggressive wax remover and now I'm finishing up with this. So if there's any residue from that wax remover, hopefully this will uh, clean that off. So this uh, two-part varnish, they say to let it induct for 10 minutes. It just that gets the chemistry started. Um, and so while I'm waiting for that to get going, I'm just going to show you what I need to do on here. This is the backrest for my petrol. Um, it's one of the redesigned backrests, the nice backrest. Um, this has been in there for a long time, and this plastic buckle here has snapped. Um, so the strap was in here like this, um, and the, the front part of that buckle is broken off. This is what the buckle's supposed to look like. You see it has that tab where that, now it's gone. Um, so what I'm going to do is just sort of thread these straps in through here where they need to go and then use my sewing machine to put some bar tacks just in there and get this strap just where it needs to be and just keep it there. So it'll lose its adjustability, but uh, I can see where I had it adjusted before and, you know, I never moved it. Um, once I got it right, I just left it there. So um, I'll probably, I may cut the, this um, off why well, have that extra piece hanging out there on both sides so I'll just take and cut those off and then sew these straps in place there and that'll be done on the sewing machine. So now this uh, varnish is ready to go it's inducted for about 10 minutes something like that and now I'll just paint this on where I need some protection you can see where I sanded into things a little bit um, so All right, that's one quick coat. We'll come back in a little bit, and if this stuff is still good, I'll paint some more of this on. Otherwise, I'll have to mix up a little bit more. So I'm just going to uh, sew these straps onto here, but I'm first going to get rid of these buckles. Uh, coat's dried a bit and we'll just quickly apply another coat. So this backrest is ready to go back in here. First I want to get the bungees to hold the back band up. Alright so I have two loops on the back bulkhead here and I've got four loops on the backrest. So I want to get tension 
to the closest loops. So I'm going to go from this loop down under the loop in the backrest, cross the next loop in the backrest, then run it up through this loop in the ball cap. And I'm going to run it through the loop in the backrest on this side and through the loop in the backrest on that side. And now I'm going to tie a water knot. So I take an o take the shock cord, tie a standard overhand knot. Now with this end, I'm just going to follow that knot backwards and around. Just like that. So I've just reproduced that knot going the opposite direction. So you see it's just like two overhand knots. If you took two pieces of shock cord, held them together and tied an overhand knot, you get the same thing. But here the ends are coming out in opposite directions. So then I want to pull this tight and get the slack out on the free ends. Yeah. And then I'm going to take and reconnect the side strap over to the side here. I end up with a finish washer here. This is a quarter twenty machine screw and um, I put a washer in there. If I just go straight with the um, finish washer, this sharp edge of the finish washer will cut into the webbing. So by putting another washer in there, I'm getting good clamping pressure. So it ends up squeezing this really tight there. So stick that in there. And in the back, in the cheek plate here, I have a uh, T-nut pre-installed. And I'll just get that going in there. Switch that up tight there. And same on the other side. And so finish nut, finish washer, flat washer, through the hole, tighten it down. Alright. So now it should be good to go there. All right, and just have a skosh more of the varnish left here. The brush is getting a little stiff, but I'll uh, we'll just get that on there to provide some protection. Eventually, this whole boat's going to need refinishing. At that point, I'll end up obviously sanding it all down and uh, blend this all together, make it. A nice finish. This is just a protective finish. That should be good under there. It'll get scratched up, well scratched up before I'm ready to refinish it again. All right, so that's all the projects I had to get the boats ready for my class. So the fact that it was really hot out and I'm working up a sweat is actually working in my favor makes the uh, epoxy kick off quicker and this varnish is going to set up quicker and everything happens a little faster when it's warm out than when it's cold out. So at this point I've made those three boats ready again for use. So I'll be using them up at the Wooden Boat School teaching the beginners sea kayaking class up there and then up at Acadia National Park at Scudic Point for my Scudic retreat. So this was a quick and dirty get them ready you know cobbler's kids have no shoes kind of thing where I just try to get it done. All the same processes could work um, for you know fixing dings in a fine finish. Same idea, you do the same thing, be a little bit more careful, spend a little bit more time at it, and blend things in a little bit more. But so that the fix on the petrol play is done. I've got brand new gaskets on the petrol and I get the backrest back on the petrol SG. So we're all good to go. So if you learned anything from this quick and dirty demo, hit like, turn on notifications, hit subscribe, all that fun stuff. So I hope you enjoyed and thanks for watching and happy paddling.